Today I'm going to review the Dell G715 laptop that was redesigned in the second half of 2020. It also received a sizable price cut recently. My configuration is at the mid-range gaming laptop level. This is the 7500 variant with the Intel i7-10750H mobile processor, NVIDIA RTX 2070 mobile GPU, the Max-Q version, 32GB of RAM, Full HD display with 144Hz refresh rate. It has an 86 watt hour battery. I'll first take a look at the design of the laptop. Next, I'll walk you through my decision process on why I chose a Dell laptop with these specs. In this review, I'll discuss six benchmarks I ran. I performed a battery life test and SSD speed test. I then ran three common benchmarks PC Mark 10, 3D Mark, and Cinebench R23. I ran these three benchmarks before and after reinstalling the first copy of Windows to remove the bloatware that came with the Dell laptop. Lastly, I played Apex Legends on the Olympus map. So my conclusion is that this laptop is a solid machine with a below average price for its specs. I expect it to be a very reliable laptop and to have very good support from Dell. It also is nicely designed and has very good build quality. Its benchmark scores are in line with my expectations based on reviews of similar computers. Gaming enthusiasts would likely be disappointed with this laptop because its thin design feels and looks nice but likely hurts its thermal profile somewhat. Also, you cannot change the voltage of the CPU because it's locked. As a result, the CPU runs on the hot side and you cannot undervolt it to reduce the temperature. The GPU performance in this laptop meets or exceeds my expectations, but the CPU underperforms somewhat because of the thermal profile. On average, they balance each other out in the benchmark tests. An easy solution for the thermal issue is using a cooling pad, which is a laptop stand with fans that blow air into the laptop. Let's take a look at the ports on this Dell laptop. The build quality of the case, display hinge, and keyboard are all very, very good. It definitely looks and feels like a high-end machine. It's thin and sturdy because of the all-metal design. A Dell G7 has more than enough ports, so you don't need a docking station or a USB hub. My old Dell laptop is over 6 years old and still works well for its intended purpose, except for the battery life, since that declines over time. I also have a Dell laptop for work. Both laptops are reliable, so when it came time to purchase a desktop replacement laptop, I put Dell immediately on the finalist list. My primary workloads for this new laptop are Microsoft Office, video editing and encoding using Shotcut, video capture using OBS Studio, 3D printing, and some light 3D design. Most of my applications are in the VMware virtual machine. I do this in order to port my desktop and apps to any computer and for better cybersecurity. I might even have multiple virtual machines running at the same time. To run multiple virtual machines well, my new desktop replacement laptop ideally needed at least 6 CPU cores and 32GB of RAM. This eliminated nearly all standard home office and mid-range gaming laptops from consideration. Because of the digital content creation work, I wanted a dedicated GPU, although it didn't have to be a high-powered one. However, since this Dell laptop does have a very solid GPU with good thermals, I might do more PC gaming in the near future. So here are the alternative 15-inch laptops I considered from Dell and other OEMs that met my minimum requirements. The base price of the Dell G715 was tied with the Acer laptop after adjusting for Windows Pro, but a 10% Cyber Monday discount made the Dell cheaper. Also, I've had bad luck with Acer products in the past, so I was planning to avoid that OEM. Excluding the Cyber Monday discount, the Alienware M15 would have been a similar deal to the Dell G7. It has a higher price, but also has higher specs. So my conclusion is I chose the Dell G715 because it had among the lowest price of any laptop I found that met my minimum specifications. I like the features and build quality. I expect it to be reliable and I trust Dell as a laptop brand. Battery life wasn't a major consideration for me since I'm primarily using this laptop while plugged in. Also, the battery life of all laptops becomes very short after 5 years or so, but at that point buying a replacement battery might not make sense because of the age of the laptop. If I cared more about battery life, I would have chosen a less powerful CPU and GPU. Even though battery life isn't a major consideration for me, I ran a battery test where I watched HD quality video over Wi-Fi. 
I watched the video for two hours, and if you extrapolate the battery performance in a linear way, this implies a battery life of about eight and a half hours. I used the following settings on the laptop for the battery test. During the test, I noticed that the CPU utilization was low to mid single digits, the Intel GPU utilization was also low to mid single digits, and the NVIDIA GPU wasn't used. This laptop has a fast SSD, a Micron 2300 with 1GB of storage. According to Micron, the SSD offers up to 3300MB per second of sequential reads and up to 2700MB per second of sequential writes. I ran the open source benchmarking tool Crystal Disk Mark. Here are the results. Read and write speeds vary depending on the type of operation. Micron specs probably reference a test similar to the first score at the top, so my tests generally confirm Micron's advertised speeds. Next I'll talk about benchmarking using Cinebench R23, PCMark10, and 3DMark. Cinebench is a CPU test, PCMark10 tests both the CPU and GPU, but primarily the CPU, and 3DMark primarily tests the GPU. I performed these three benchmarks before and after reinstalling Windows 10 to get rid of Dell's bloatware. During the test, I was using the optimized thermal profile and Dell Power Manager and was using a balanced power plan. When I reinstalled Windows, I installed a lot of the original software, new software, and all of the needed drivers, so the laptop was not in a 100% ideal state for benchmarking, but perhaps a more realistic one. I also ran these benchmarks one time. Ideally, you should run them a few times and use the median because performance can vary. So as you can see, performance improved by 2.8% to 8.3% after reinstalling Windows. After running these benchmark tests, my simple question was, is this good or bad? Here's a table of PCMark 10 scores on various laptops sorted by CPU power. The highlighted laptops in the middle have the same CPU and GPU as my G715. I used PCMark 10 because it is the most commonly used benchmark and it tests real-world performance of both the CPU and GPU. So even though I could have easily pushed up my PCMark score through several different methods, my laptop is right in the middle of the pack on performance. If you dive deeper into the benchmarking results, I think my CPU underperformed and my GPU overperformed, but they balance each other out in the final score. My CPU setup runs on the hot side, and unfortunately Dell disabled their ability to undervolt it, which would have allowed it to run cooler. As a result, this laptop is not a good fit for gaming enthusiasts. My main game is Apex Legends on Xbox Series X, so I decided to play a few hours on this laptop at high settings to benchmark it against the Xbox Series X. I output it to an external 44Hz BenQ display on the Series X and the Dell G715. On both, I used a resolution of 1440p and played the Olympus map. Apex Legends on the Xbox Series X is capped at 60 FPS and I was able to maintain that at all times. On the Dell laptop, I was also able to maintain 60 FPS as well while on high graphical settings. The FPS stayed in the 90 to 110 range in most cases. So there you have it. The Dell G715 laptop has great specs, a good price, a very nice design, and decent benchmarking results in home office, digital content creation, and gaming. The battery life is also okay as well. Dell is a trusted laptop brand and has good support, which I don't think should be overlooked. Benchmark results are right in line with my expectations based on its specs. The main negative with this laptop is that the great look and feel of the package means that its cooling setup for the CPU might not be ideal, and Dell doesn't allow you to undervolt the CPU, however I think this is solvable with a cooling pad. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. are the Apex Champions.